I've had the casting blasted a very fine grain of sand, cleaned it up. Um, these are the three holes I've got to repair. Uh, they're 7/16s BSF, so I've actually bought a 7 BSF thread repair kit to do the job properly. I could have made I could have made that metric like 12 millimetres on bastardised studs, but I want to keep it right and we'll make it the way it's supposed to be, 7 16 BSF. That's the one there that actually had a stud screwed into it and the threads aren't good. I'm going to put a tap on that one first, but these two for definite will need thread inserts putting in them. So we'll clamp this down and then go about doing that. At least I've got a nice flat face to mount it on and the faces are parallel so it makes mounting of it fairly straightforward. The clamp on there, probably a clamp on there. It's going to be enough to hold it. Come on, you scabby bastard. I keep boxfuls of bits of aluminium and bits of steel, bits of bearing track, just to use as packing pieces to do jobs like this with. You can't have too many packing pieces and bits of shim. You try and keep that clamp bars level. Bastard level if you can. That's good. Right, so we've basically got that by the short and curlies. That's going nowhere now. We'll do these two first, the easy ones. <coughs> Just going to use this transfer punch to line up the, the chuck nice and accurately. Right, that's pretty good there, so we'll lock the table off at that, and then we'll put the drill through there. Right, so that's the table locked off there, both axes. We'll use a special drill from the thread repair kit. I can where I put the bastard, here it is. I would imagine that this will be sharp, extremely sharp. Now we want a chuck key. I've got one somewhere. This is not a particularly good chuck, but it, the thing with this is you can tap with it and you can wind the tap backwards where the keyless chucks, you can't. I'm going to lock the quill off and I'm going to feed this up 
using the, the table just to make sure it doesn't snatch and drag itself through. Okay, we're going to slow this down a little bit. And this casting, it's steel, it's not cast iron, so it, it'll drill quite nicely, or it should do. Nice and gently. Right, that's cleaned that up nicely. Nice clean hole. We'll put the top in when everything's set on the same, same setting, it's already to go. These taps are normally decent quality, it wasn't a really expensive thread repair kit, but it wasn't a dirt cheap one. I've used the cheap ones before and I wasted tarry for aluminium but no good for anything of any substance. Right. We'll use the jog function on the milling machine. I may have to drop the belts down slightly to get a little bit more torque. I'm not quite sure what we'll do. It. Try and see what happens. It's doing all right, that. Happy with that. Right, that's all the way through. Nice clean sharp thread that'll take it in so it's no problem at all and that it'll be the end of it that'll it'll not give any more problems after this. Once the studs are into there, it's gonna be a good job. We'll do that one and then we'll put the insert into there. This is a blind hole that doesn't go all the way through. So I need to make sure we're doing drill down too far, so I'll do a little bit of measuring before we start. I'm not sure if it's got a broken there or a broken stone or something in there, so we'll put the drill in, see what happens. I mean, I can see there's a good half inch, so I'll put a half inch in first and then we'll go from there. That feels like it's a bottom of a hole there. I think that's broken stud in there.
Okay, a little bit more, but not much. That would have been a little bit deeper, but mm. as deep as possible, really, to get as much thread in there as you can. I'm sure we're going to have a bit of measure and see how much we've got to play with. Not very scientific, but it's going to do the job for us. I'm not doing this on cylinder heads to see how much material I had before we brew through on modifying inlet ports. Right, so we've got that much, which is roughly the same as that. So we can in fact go a little bit deeper. Right, black marks at the bottom of the hole. I'll go down for another two mil. So I want to get as deep as I can, but I still want to be safe. I think if I break through, it's just a case of putting sealer on the stud, but I'd rather not break through. I mean, two mils and every two threads, it'll make a big difference. Sure, that's not like SGI and it's not drilling like steel, it could be a, a real good quality cast iron. In fact, it probably is. This chucks crap, but it's does what it's supposed to do. The top will spin when it gets to the bottom of the hole like that. The chuck will spin on the top, which is what I want. Yeah, lovely sharp thread that. That'll give them no problems at all. Right, I'll put the two inserts into here now and then we'll have to make an adapter for the drill and the tap to do that awkward bastard at the back. I'm going to count how many threads I've got in there. I should really get eight full threads in. So if we look at the inserts, they've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So if I take a couple of threads off there, it should go in there quite nicely. You want it like half a thread below the top of the hole. Right, this is the insert tool and supply. And hopefully these just screw straight in. You don't need lock tighten once that in that in. Just gonna put a little bit more. Lift that collar up a little bit. I'm 
right through that. There's half a thread below the surface, that's worked out very nicely indeed. I'm happy at that. I need a permanent repair, there's no. Once I'm in, that's it. Absolutely spot on. Snap the little, little tang off. The little tool to give you. Some of the cheaper inserts are actually steel. These are stainless. Some of the cheap ones are magnetic. Right, put one into there and then the awkward one I want to do. I've got studs to make for this as well. That's a little bit. I want to call it taken off it. Just go it right through. can't get these out you've got to you can screw them right through but to get them out you've got to flick the end up and pull them out with a pair of pliers and that obviously destroys them right that's nice very nice right that one there we can drill it but I think we may have to modify the tap to be able to get the tap started um, Although it's a decent quality tap, it has got a centre in there, so I'll be able to line that up and possibly put a centre in and screw it in that way. There's enough clearance on there, there's got to be enough clearance because I have drilled, the hole's been drilled, so we'll set the drill up, drill that one. Right, that's happy with that. Lock the table off again. Oh, it'll probably cut much better. That's actually been ground away. He had to get clearance for the drill for machine this originally. I very much doubt it's here now. Right, so that's through. Put a little spring loaded tap follower here, which should keep that tap nice and straight. Center in there, like that, and then it's got spring pressure on, and that should hold it. I need something to turn that with. It's right in the awkwardest possible position it could be. But I'm used to that now. Nothing's easy. I've got the spring compression the tap follow on I'm putting weight on it so it's gonna the tap's gonna be held straight. Can't do anything else. And it is a nice sharp tap so it's going in quite nicely. Something a little bit bigger than that, that's hurting me hands a little bit.
Right. I think these brake adjustable spanners, I do use them quite a lot more than I should really I suppose, but they do the job. There's going to be more, more grips on here in a minute, unfortunately. I don't see what else I can do. I don't want to, but I'm going to. Lucky to get a grip on this to actually it taps that hard. That's not gonna work. Bastard thing. It's not far off being all the way through actually. I'm just persevere I think. That's actually doing nothing now. Possibly looking get in that way ah. I think we've we'll actually managed to get it all the way through I'm just about Got it. I'm going to put the heli coil into here and then I'm going to put some crack test solution down these two ports and leave it overnight and make sure nothing actually seeps through to the other side. That's what the, the fault was on one of the earlier regulators I stripped down. It was porous between the two. But this one seems to be in a, a much better condition. That's absolutely spot on. Nice. Proper repair. No bodging, no bastardising. Splendid. That's where the other casting was pitted. Or at least it was hauled right through there. Um, the one we welded up. This one's got a little bit of pitting in. But when you feel it, you can feel there's a lot of metal between those two surfaces, between the two faces in the there, there's plenty left in there. So I'm not at all that worried about it. So what I'm going to do is spray some leak detector, some crack spray into here, into there, and leave it overnight. And if there's a, any porosity in there, the, the crack detector will find it, no doubt about that. And this is the stuff. We'll leave that overnight. If there's anything in there, that'll find it without a doubt. And once it's passed that test, it's a case of assembling it. 
uh, good clean up some of these thresholds to clean out and then we'll put it back together and once it's back together I can put a proper test on it probably just an air test but it's looking very well at the minute right this is stood overnight I'm gonna have a quick look before I go to work when I look in there in there and in there it's absolutely bone dry there's a little bit there that's come down where the the valve opening is I expected that but there's no fluid in there at all it would it would just come straight through I can spray a little bit of developer in there but I know for a fact that there isn't any horrible red dye coming through Right, we'll let that do its job. And there's nothing nasty there. Nothing at all. And the pitting that is there is not that deep, so it's going to be perfectly acceptable. We'll leave the developer on overnight. Or... Hi, my name's John. Welcome to one of that Sunday night nightcap. Except it's not Sunday, it's Wednesday, and I'm filming this for Sunday because when you're watching this now, which is Sunday, I'll be driving up the M18 uh, on my way back from the NEC at Birmingham. Uh, where hopefully I've had a good weekend. Anyway, that's enough talking in the is it the past or the future? Anyway, tonight's nightcap. I'll show some more bits of film um, of the centre of steam wagon regulator. Uh, one or two broken studs to get out, a little bit more repair work. Uh, I have some of your meal sent into us, which I think is really a really useful bit of gear. Uh, I'll show a little bit of how that's used and what it's for. These are the items that were sent to us. Um, they've been 3D printed. In plastic 3D printers become very popular. I have problems with 2D, I mean 3D. And what they are, they're for cleaning out most of our sockets. That one's got a lovely rosewood handle on, really nice. So basically all you do is you push it in there, it's a nice tight fit, turn it like that and it brings out all a little bit of shape and swarf, you can see in there the focus is, all a little bit of metal I brought out that was the number three most taper, this one does the number two most tapers it's pulling all kinds of crap out of there, these haven't been cleaned for a long time A really good fit in the tape, you can feel it touching all the way down. It's important as well, these things get a little, a little ding on where they've been dropped or bumped. A little oil spoon, just gently rub them off and it makes them accurate again. It doesn't take much on a taper to knock it out of true. Anyway, really happy there, thanks very much. You'll see me using them all the time. Once again, it's just time to say thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing. And as always, a massive thanks for all the kind words and well wishes. Anyway, thanks for watching.